how's it going? So in today's video, we're gonna show you the equipment that I just picked up from Blue Savvy. So I'm super excited about that. We're gonna go over what equipment you need in order to train and compete in triathlons to maximize your performance. Okay, so Blue Semi is a proud sponsor of the Pacing Racing Podcast. Now, if you haven't been able to listen in yet, then definitely you can check the description below. They'll find a link to the podcast or just search Pacing Racing wherever you listen to your podcast and definitely let us know what you think about it. Now, first, let's talk about the most common question, wetsuits and how to know what wetsuit you'll need. Now, first off, you don't need a wetsuit. Now, the reality is if you can swim in a pool without a wetsuit, it means you can swim outdoors without one as well. Now, although it helps in so many ways, if you just don't want to spend that extra money on one, then it's perfectly fine to just race in swim shorts or whatever you feel comfortable in. Now, how do you know if it's race legal? The typical rule of thumb for Ironman races is 25 degrees Celsius and colder, then that means you're allowed to wear one. If it's 25 degrees Celsius and warmer water on race morning, then it won't be race legal and you'll have to look at swim skins, which we'll get into later. Now, another key thing is it has to be five millimeters or less thickness, which you can see whenever you purchase it online. And most of these on blue70.com, if not all of them will be race legal. So you won't have to worry about that. Now, what does a wetsuit do for you? Now, first off, it offers buoyancy, which assists with floating and weight dispersion in the water. and just helps you overall as a stronger swimmer. Now, it keeps you warmer and it doesn't keep you dry, but it traps water in and your body temperature warms that water up. Now, here's a tip from some of the pros I've talked to that if you have a thermos of warm water, then pour it into the wetsuit before getting into the water if it's cold out. Now, another pro tip was if it's really cold, you can also look at the thermal wear, which you can find on blue70.com and it's just essentially thicker wetsuits that also have different accessories like gloves, um, booties, they have skull caps, and everything you need to swim in a lot colder temperatures that you wouldn't feel comfortable swimming in in a wetsuit. Now, overall, what does wetsuit do? The biggest key factor is improve swim efficiency. Now, keeping you compressed and streamlined in the water helps reduce the overall drag, and the buoyancy will improve your swim technique overall, making you a very streamlined swimmer. Okay, so here is the Helix Men's Blue 70 wetsuit. So it's their latest version and it's by far, hands down, my most favorite wetsuit ever. It's worn by many of the pros out on the surf today. So if you've seen pros out there, take a glimpse because a lot of them are wearing the Blue 70 Helix Men's wetsuit. Now, there's so many features we could talk about. The blue shoulders offer zero restriction. They have these orange sleeves that are made of like a lighter, more breathable material. The zipper does up and ends at the bottom. So it's not chafing your neck. There's so many perks to it. Obviously, 100%, it's a really great quality wetsuit and obviously if pros are wearing it on some of their most important race days of their year then you know it's got to be making a big difference to them so this is the helix men's wetsuit on blue70.com now this wetsuit as of today runs you about 850 us now if you're looking at maybe doing a ton of ironman races or you're very competitive in the swim then this is a solid investment because you're getting the best bang for your dollar like it's a really incredible wetsuit and you can see here on the website and also everything that I've kind of showed you it's just an incredible wetsuit but in saying that this suit isn't for everyone now blue 70 does in fact offer many cheaper wetsuits and of course these wetsuits are all great and will at the end of the day do the trick but for wetsuits meant for everyday age group triathletes there are other wetsuits like the reaction wetsuit the fusion wetsuit the reaction if you want sleeveless they also have that option they have sprint wetsuits, and if you're looking for something more specialized, like the thermal reaction, which is what I talked about earlier for colder waters, or if you want the Alliance Swim Run, if you're doing a swim run style of race, then they have tons of different options. And as you can see, the prices are very well suited for each, at each suit. Now, again, if you want the Helix, the one like I have, and many of the pros wear, then you're looking at paying 850 but you're paying for the extreme quality that you're getting out of it. And at the end of the day, there's nothing wrong if you're just starting out in triathlons, then by all means, the sprint wetsuit will do absolutely just fine for you. And same with any of them in between. All right, so now, like I said, the only thing that would actually prevent you from wearing this wetsuit would be high temperature waters, anything above 25 degrees Celsius on race morning. So in that case, you wouldn't be able to wear this wetsuit. Instead, you'd be wearing a swim skin, which is something like that. 
So what is a swim skin? Now, a swim skin is something that's meant for swimming in hot temperatures. Now, they don't offer buoyancy like a wetsuit, but instead, they provide the compression needed to reduce the friction created in the water, and therefore making you a faster swimmer and making it easier for you to swim. Now, you will see in Kona they wear swim skins as well as any of the other races in hotter environments. Now, this is something to consider looking at depending where you decide to race and when. Now, oftentimes, you don't know if it will be a wetsuit legal race or a non-wetsuit race until the morning of. Now, another two essential items to your swim are the swim caps and goggles. Now, swim caps, again, work like a swim skin and reduce friction and drag. Now, every race hands out swim caps, so these aren't really necessary to purchase, but they are available if you do want to buy one and get used to it before your first race. Now, goggles, what you need to know is try a few pairs on and make sure you find some that fit. Now, I've worn a few pairs, and no matter how tight I've cranked them, they'd still leak water. And often I wouldn't realize until I was swimming in a race that I would have to close one eye because water was leaking into my goggles. So I hope that doesn't happen to any of you guys. Now, needless to say, I've had several pairs of Blue 70 goggles, and they all fit amazing, and I haven't had any leakage, so that's a huge bonus for me. Now, goggles tips, guys, just try them before you buy them if you can. And if you're shopping online, just make sure you're going with a good brand and look at the reviews. And of course... Buy clear for the pool and tinted for outdoors. Okay, so let's talk about some pool toys. Now, a kickboard and pull boys are two of my favorite training tools. Now, a kickboard helps improve your kick and your lower body strength. It has a high buoyancy, so it helps keep your upper body firm in the water and allows you to kick freely. Now, a pull boy keeps your body streamlined in the water. It adds buoyancy to your hips to help you sort of target the upper body and your core strength in the water. So if you use these interchangeable, then they're the two biggest essential pieces of equipment that you can use to maximize your training performance. Now, lastly, how do you carry all this and stay organized? Well, my friends, that's what the transition bag is for. Now, this bag is my favorite because it has enough room for everything you need for the race without feeling like you're going on a week's vacation. Now it has the bottom cabin, which is meant for a wet wetsuit or swimwear. Now it has room for your cycling shoes, your running shoes, a helmet, your triathlon suit, and all of your nutrition. All right guys, so hopefully that answered all of your questions when it comes to decision making and buying the right swimwear and swim equipment. Now if there's any other questions, obviously leave them in the comments below or you can send me a direct message anywhere on Instagram, email, anything like that. I'll uh, be sure to answer it. Other than that guys, Thanks again for listening in and be sure to hit that subscribe button. Other than that, take care and we'll see you next time.